Hello, my name is Walter and welcome to our very first episode of our new series, Walter's Way Around Ireland, where we'll be going to some of the most beautiful, historic, scenic places that you can possibly imagine all over the country, places which I love and I want you to come with me. Today we are starting in the lovely, vibrant town of Kinsale, beautiful town right at the beginning of the Wild Atlantic Way. So yes, I came to Kinsale, oh my goodness, when I was a child, I'd say first when I was about 15 years old. And we were actually bringing my brother to a sailing course here with his little boat. And what do I remember from then? I remember having lots of lovely food and ice cream and its vibrancy and all the people around here. It's, it was absolutely gorgeous. Some people would have said over the years that it had a kind of a, you know, a yuppie kind of an image or that. I don't think it has. I think it's, it, it reflects the sea. You look at it, at the beauty of the sea and the harbour, the Charles Fort, looking out onto the further out, you see the fishing boats bopping up and down. I mean, that is what's reflected on land. And I think that's reflected on all us people, from the colourful people to the, <laughs> to the mad people. But collectively, it's the friendliness and the welcome that you get in Kinsale is special. There are so many activities around Kinsale. There's the kite surfing, the surfing, there's whale watching, kayaking, fishing, lovely fishing. Then on land you've got a super golf course and you've got lovely walks around James Fort and walks around Charles Fort and up around what's called Compass Hill and all the time you're overlooking the water. So now I want to introduce you to somebody, a great friend of mine, uh, Mary O'Neill, or as she's better known, Mary Tapp. It is a privilege having you, Walter. We, I know you with years. And it is lovely to meet you, Maris, the, the cameraman. It is a pleasure to have you in my pub. My friend Mary Tapp has run this lovely little bar in the centre of Kinsale. The family have been here for four or five generations and she now runs it with her son, Brian. A lot of people know me now. I'd meet him when I'm out walking. Hello, Mary, when he, when he go and open it or things like that, you know. But, um, I know their faces from coming in. I took over this place in 1974 when my auntie died in March 74 and we're gone since. But I was filling points when I was eight to ten years of age out of a wooden barrel. And the bar business is our is our our livelihood and our life. When I was chatting to Mary, I was keen to find out. You know, what was life like when she was young? And what did they do? What did they play? How did they, did they meet their friends? Had Kinsale changed much since she was a young girl? I went to the Convent of Mercy School, up just up the hill, which is converted now into apartments. And what we used to do for fun then is, we'd have a few pence to put together and we'd buy a skipping rope between us. We do our skipping just across the road there, um, where the police station is at the moment. There was Curtin's butcher shop there. We'd have our skipping rope up there, and we had great fun growing up. We just we maybe put two or three, or maybe six pence, and we'd buy a skipping rope for maybe two shillings, and which we had great fun growing up. I asked Mary were there any famous people that came into her pub and to my amazement I was intrigued with one of her stories. The astronaut here, Dan Tenney, um, he's married to a Kinsale girl, so he got, they got, we're friends of theirs, her family, and he rang me, he telephoned me twice from space, 10 years ago, I suppose it's 10 years ago now, Brian. Yeah, 10 years ago. And uh, look, he's up there, and there are the invitations to NASA. Oh, I was invited out there at the time of the launch. Yeah, and here he rang twice. The first time he rang and I wasn't here. Brian took the message and he rang again, and um, I was here. 
and Brian at nine o'clock every evening during the summer runs super ghost tours around Kinsale. In September 1601, 28 Spanish warships came in right into this bay that you're looking at right now with 3,000 Spanish soldiers. Those ships were meant to be going to the north of Ireland, up towards Belfast. Because of a big storm, they had to come into this sheltered harbour of Kinsale. And what happened after that is the O'Neills and O'Donnells had to bring their 10,000 soldiers from the north of Ireland right down here to fight the English here with the Spanish. Most of you know there are 32 counties in Ireland. 26 of them are in the Republic of Ireland and six of them are still part of the United Kingdom. And that is all because of that storm in 1601 and the O'Neills and the Donalds bringing 10,000 people from the north of Ireland. That created a huge void in Northern Ireland. And in the 1600s, that void was filled with lots of Presbyterians and Protestant people from England and Scotland. So that is why the six counties are still separate from the Republic of Ireland, and it changed Irish history forever. So the, the actual Battle of Kinsale only took two or three hours, and it was on Christmas Eve in 1601. And the Spanish stayed in the town. The O'Neills and the O'Donnells were above Kinsale Town, out the other side. And the O'Donnells didn't get that much in, involved in the battle, because the English actually came to the side of the O'Neill clan and straight at the O'Neill clan. And those on horseback retreated quickly, and those on foot were absolutely slaughtered. After the Battle of Kinsale, we lost the battle. The O'Neills lost, lots of people slaughtered. Um, huge void left in the north of Ireland. So down here in Kinsale, the English got pretty cross that the Spanish could come into what was basically um, English territory at the time. They first of all built James Fort across the water from us here, and they built Charles Fort a few decades later right behind us. This star-shaped fort right up on this promontory here um, at the entrance to Kinsale Harbour. But at another stage they actually put a chain from the blockhouse right across here to Charles Fort to stop invading ships from then on. Any invading ships were stopped coming into this lovely sheltered bay of Kinsale. When it was built first, it was built for about 400 soldiers here and their families. So there were up to 1,200 people who would actually live in this fort. Since then, of course, a bit more exciting, in the 1960s and 70s, this was a sort of a hippie commune and this is where everyone came and smoked dope and drank cans and played Beatles music and had a wonderful time. And um, since all of that, it's become an most amazing tourist attraction run by the Office of Public Works here in Ireland. It's the most beautiful town, lovely little streets, lovely bookshops, lovely craft shops, and they make so much here. The craftsmanship is amazing. So you're not just buying products coming from abroad, a lot of it is made by the craftsmen here. It's also the gourmet capital of Ireland, and as you can see, the fish is coming daily from the sea, the vegetables are coming from locally grown from within three or four miles of the actual town. So you're going to have the best food experience that you can possibly imagine in these lovely restaurants here in Kinsale.
This is Bastion, one of the many lovely restaurants in Kinsale. Local produce, local ingredients, lovely meals, and it just happens to have a Michelin star. Here we are at one of the most famous fish restaurants in Ireland called Fishy Fishy, and we're going in to meet the owner, Martin Shannon, who's going to tell us all about his lovely family restaurant. Hi, Martin. Walter, <laughs> welcome to Fishy Fishy. Hey, thank you. This is a very special restaurant. It's called Fishy Fishy. Um, where did it all start, Martin? Where did it all start? It started back here in Kinsale about 35 years ago. I mean, I came to Kinsale and I worked for Jim and Paul Edwards for four years. Met my now wife, still wife, of 34 years. And we decided we'd emigrate to America. So ended up in Manhattan. Um, I remember getting up one morning, early in the morning, and going down to South Street Seaport to the fishing um, fish market down there, very early in the morning. And I thought, oh, I just love this. It was just, again, it was like Kinsale, but in a bigger version in Manhattan. I was like, why can't we do this in Kinsale? So, spent three years living in California, loved it to bits, had a great time, drank wonderful wine, eat lots of great food, and again, very multicultural. And I came back to Ireland. We came back to Ireland, myself and Marie, in 1991 with the ambition of setting up a seafood restaurant. And instead, we got into the fish business. All our product in Fishy Fishy comes out of the harbour. If it doesn't come out of the harbour, if it ain't fresh, we don't have it. You base yourself in Kinsale. There is this line kind of that goes from Kinsale to Kenmare and everything south of it. Clonakilty, Ross Carberry, Skibbereen, Baltimore, Skull, um, Baldy Hob, Iries, Ahilies, Castletown Bear are all forgotten. And they're magic. They are magic, you know. And that is, it's worth, it's worth staying out of the bigger centres and giving yourself an extra couple of days in those places. Give yourself another day or two in Kinsale. It's worth it. So here's, here's one of the finest hotels, the Blue Haven, across the road here. Lovely place to stay, super food. Hamlet's Bar in the background. Okay, so this is one of my favourite shops, Murphy's Grocers. It's been here for ages. Run by Sheila and her sister. You get the most beautiful locally grown fruit and veg, leeks, cabbages, apples. Lovely little shop, absolutely beautiful stuff. And also next door is Daisy Chain um, with Brenda and Patigale, two more sisters that run this lovely flower shop. It's all sisters on Pier Street here in Kinsale. It's Miley Murphy's bicycle shop and Gillian here in Greenhouse and Other Stories. Two more great craft shops. One here, Boland's. You can get all sorts of gifts in here. And across the road is the old commercial warehouse. That's Cronin's now, another huge gift shop. Coco's handmade artisan chocolate. Francis and his wife, Booty and family. Thank you very much, Casey. Oh, lovely, the real thing, the real chocolate. Yeah, so Super! Nice. Thank you very much. Brilliant! You meet so many people. You can actually walk the whole town in. If you actually walk, just walked around, you can walk the whole town in, in 10 or 15 minutes. But if you want to get into all the shops and see everything, you know, you could spend a couple of lovely days here in Kinsale. If any of you want to come and live in Kinsale, oh my God, what a spot. You know, you're 15 miles from Cork City, you're 12 miles from Cork International Airport. The schools here are incredible. There's, there's even an old Irish Gwail Skull, Gwail Skull, which is an Irish speaking primary school. And then you've got a brand new second level school with new running tracks and sports facilities and amazing science, physics, biology, maths. The actual students from Kinsale College every year are one of the top prize winners in the National Science Exhibition in Ireland and they all go and um, represent Ireland 
or right across the world. So this is where we started this morning in James Fort and then we were up at Charles Fort and now we've come back into and we're in smack in the middle of Kinsale Town. So this is real colourful Kinsale, lovely little streets. There's my favourite little pub, Dalton's Bar. Great music, a couple of nights a week. Kinsale was a walled town and just over here is an outline of where all the walls were in Kinsale and there were five gates coming into the town. Again, it was a, a walled structure for defensive purposes. And just behind us here is actually a waste management vehicle from a hundred years ago. Kinsale was actually a real trading, important trading town. And it was like Venice, because the water came right up to here, that's up the short quay and along these streets. And this is where they tied up the boats here on the um, Holy Stone. And this is actually also where lots of people used to gather and chat and everything, because the water was right up to here. And it's right across from what's well, now the museum, but it was the market house. And it was built as a market house. And it was also where the inquest um, happened in 1915 for the Lusitania. As you know, the Lusitania was coming from America and it was bombed by a German U-boat. And that was the reason that America joined the First World War. So here we are at the back of the museum. Just want to show you this boy, which is called a Bostoon which um, they say came, was washed up and it came from Boston, Massachusetts. And the anchor behind me could well have been from the Lusitania. And that was brought in one day on a large, big fishing net. Look at that for a cabbage. And Brussels sprouts. We can't pass Stone Mad without a little shot of this. Uh, Jill is an amazing lady from California. This is probably the most photographed shop in all of Ireland. Fantastic shop, lovely jewellery, lovely knickknacks, beautiful presents, anything you want. So from here, we're just coming up this lovely little street and we're going to go up to Desmond Castle. So the captains used to be taken off the ships down there in the front of the White House. They'd come up the, outside the back door here and they'll put in a chair and four men, out of respect for these captains, would actually lift them up in this chair right up to the Custom House, which is Desmond Castle at the top of the hill up here. Here's Desmond Castle. This was the Customs House, um, built by the Earl of Desmond in the early 1500s. So this is where all the trade, customs was done for all the boats coming in. And between it being a Custom House and a wine museum, it was actually a prison as well. And it was known as the French prison and a lot of mostly French prisoners, but also Spanish, Portuguese and American prisoners were locked up in here in the Desmond Castle. I'm not convinced this was his house, but some clever person called it the Giant's Cottage. So what I love about Kinsale, as you obviously can see at this stage, I just love the history of it. I love all the old churches. I love the way it's down by Kinsale Harbour. We knew all this history of the Battle of Kinsale in 1601. The lovely little streets, the shopping streets, the restaurants, the cafes, the beautiful food, everything made in Kinsale, which is so lovely. And the ingredients for all the restaurants, they, it's all grown. I know the people that grow it. I know the fishermen that bring in the fish to the harbour. It's just, it's just got everything and it's so accessible as well, of course, because you're only 15 miles from Cork City. But it's just, it's got everything. It's one of the most beautiful towns in Ireland. Now come with me into St. Maltos. This was built in 1190. It's the oldest church in use in Ireland. I wanted to bring you into St. Maltos because religion was so strong in Kinsale. And here we are in the Church of Ireland church, which was built obviously for Catholics in the 1100s. But they have service here 
every Sunday. So this is the oldest church in use in Ireland. The Carmelites also came to Kinsale, the Carmelite, and there's a lovely Carmelite friary just up the hill. They were actually given the site by the local Protestant landlord, but of course in the 1700s during the penal times in Ireland, Catholics couldn't own land, they couldn't be educated in Ireland, and the Protestant landlord actually took back ownership of the site and at the end of the penal times gave the site back to the Carmelite Friary. This is the old baptismal font dating right back to the beginning, back in the 1100s. Can you imagine all the babies that were baptised in this right here at this baptismal font? This chapel actually was built by a man called Galway, G-A-L-W-E-Y, prior to the Reformation, and prior to 1500. And then when it became Church of Ireland, it went into ruin, it wasn't used anymore, and it was cut off. This is a lovely old, old bit of chapel. So here we are at the little known gem in Kinsale, the Abbey Holy Well. There are over 3,000 holy wells in Ireland, and this is a lovely little one. So here we are at the Kinsale Holy Well. This is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The 3,000 holy wells all over the country are dedicated to different saints, but they're actually all pre-Christian places as well of healing. So some of them are for healing eyesight, others for pain, some for animals, some for anxiety. Um, there's one tradition here in the Kinsale Holy Well that if anybody from Kinsale is traveling, they come with an empty bottle and they fill up the holy in the water into the bottle, put it in with their luggage, and that keeps them safe wherever they're traveling to all over the world. So I'm going to do exactly this now. Now I'm going to fill up the bottle of Kinsale. Holy well water. So now I've got my holy water in my bottle put in with my luggage, and that will keep us safe wherever we go. So here I am coming into the really old graveyard and site of the old 7th century abbey in Kinsale. So it doesn't get much older than this. We're all going to end up somewhere, but you couldn't get much nicer than this, could you? Kinsale is a huge maritime town. It's a very sheltered harbour, so going way back, you've got the battleships coming in in the 1600s, but then it was a huge trading town. They brought in a lot of goods here, a lot of wine and brandy and whiskey, and they exported a huge amount of fish from here. They actually used to bring the fish in and salt it, and a lot of, would you believe, a lot of Scottish women used to come here and live here and work here salting all the fish to be exported all over Europe. And it was also a major place for the merchant navy. So the British merchant navy had a, was, had a base here. And a lot, of, a lot of the families from Kinsale, a lot of their ancestors actually worked and in the British navy and traveled the world from here. So you've got all, all of that right up to the present day, which when you, we still have a solid fishing industry here based in Kinsale. And you've got a marina here with a yacht club and they do sailing courses every summer. So people come, children come from all over the world to do their sailing courses here. You can charter a yacht, you can charter a luxury boat to go around Ireland and Europe from here. There's a really good tourist office here and about every hour, hour or two during the normal visitor season, there are a couple of great guys that do um, walking tours, walking historical tours, and they're really, really, really good. Kinsale is known for its food and its maritime and its history, but it's also known for its sustainability. It's the first transition town in the world 
not only do they produce a lot of food around here, but there's a huge education behind it, and especially here at Kinsale College. So I've gone out the Bandon Road, and out about two miles up here is where the Battle of Kinsale was in 1601. So this is the Stone of Destiny to mark the site of the Battle of Kinsale in 1601. And this was put up in 2001, 400 years after the battle. And it's made from stone from the four provinces, from Munster, Leinster, Connacht and Ulster. So we're on our way from Kinsale, out to the old head of Kinsale, but I wanted to bring you to see this phenomenal little gem here in Ballinspittle, near the village of Ballinspittle. It's the moving statue, and in 1985, thousands upon thousands of people came from all over Ireland to see the statue moving and to pray while watching the statue. So here we are at the Lusitania Memorial site at the old head of Kinsale on the south coast of Ireland. And look at that beautiful scenery behind me. So standing here at the old head of Kinsale, you can just feel the history. Because right out there behind us, 11 miles out, on the 7th of May 1915, at 10 past two in the afternoon, the Lusitania was torpedoed by a German warship. The British waters had an exclusion zone. Just before that, the Germans declared it a war zone and all boats could be, according to them, torpedoed, bombed at this stage. So the Lusitania was coming in by the Fastnet Rock around the southwest coast of Ireland. And it actually changed course, and the U boat thought it had lost its target. And then it came back on course. The U boat was 11 meters under the sea, and they were looking at it through its periscope. And then at 10 past two, they fired the torpedo at the Lusitania. It sank in 18 minutes, and just under 1,200 people lost their lives, and 761 people were saved, mostly by local fishermen and local boatmen around this part of the country. They just jumped into their boats and rowed out and sailed out the 11 miles and picked up so many survivors. The inquest took place in the market house, which we saw in Kinsale and there are some of the survivors buried around St. Malto's Church in the town in Kinsale. Here we are in the wilds of the old head of Kinsale on the cliff. I feel a little bit like a seagull perched on the edge of this cliff, but behind us, and this is why we're here, is to show you the old head of Kinsale golf course, where the top golfers from all over the world come to play it right on this course here. What a course! So this is the Garden of Remembrance, created by Kathleen Murphy, on her home farm here in near Kinsale. And she was a nurse in a local hospital in New York in 9-11 on that awful day when the Twin Towers were bombed. She came home afterwards and she dedicated this part of her home farm. They planted a tree, 343 trees, for each of the firefighters that perished on that day. What a lovely thing to do in memory of them. And there's also a tree planted to her friend, Father Michael Judge, who was the chaplain for all the firefighters on that day. This is one of the most special places in Ireland. Raymond Murphy. Captain Terence Nation, Captain William Burke Jr., Chief John Fanning. Wasn't it such a lovely thing to do? 
I, I get very emotional in here to think that a nurse from her home farm here was nursing in New York at 9-11, that awful day, and came back and this, did this beautiful memorial to all of those 343 firefighters that lost their lives on that day. The memorial, especially put up on lovely local stone to the 343 firefighters. And look, they come from all over America, County of Los Angeles, Squad 252, Foxborough, Monterey Park, all fire firefighters and their families come here from all over America to pay tribute to the, those mighty guys that did so much to try and save lives on that awful day and losing their own lives in the process. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Kinsale. I think, my personal opinion, it's one of the most beautiful towns in Ireland. What do I love about Kinsale that I want to share with you? I really want you to get the feel of the place. And the feel of Kinsale to me is, first of all, the history of Kinsale, because you've got the monastic sites going back to the 7th century. You've got the big battlegrounds. You're looking out the harbour and you're thinking of the 28 Spanish ships coming in in 1601 for the, 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 the Battle of Kinsale. What else do you love? I mean, now it's this vibrant, colourful, beautiful town with lovely cafes and restaurants. And not only is the food lovely and it's all local produce and it's fishermen bringing it in at the pier from the, in their trawlers. It's the farmers and gardeners bringing it from the local, uh, just, you know, within five miles of the town. But it's also the way they prepare it and the way they serve it because you've got some of the nicest people working in the cafes and restaurants in Kinsale and they're, they're absolutely delightful and to me that's, that's part of the experience is the people that you meet as you're walking down the street. <laughs>